Today, we're going to go through the process of extending the wiring for the automatic bed leveler so it can reach the main board on the Sunlu S8. But this process also works for any situation where you need to extend these wires. To do this, we'll need a few tools. A soldering station with soldering iron, some helping hands, flux, solder, heat shrink, and of course the bed leveler wire itself, and five pieces of 24 gauge wire at six feet long. To get started, take your bed leveler wire and cut it in half and then pull the wires apart so you have the five different wires. You'll want to do this to both ends and it does take a little bit of effort to separate them. You could also use a knife to help you split the wires, which I should have done since I had an exacto knife right next to me. The reason we want these wires split so far down is so we can put our heat shrink tubing over them and have them far enough away from the soldering that's happening that it doesn't shrink before we want it to. With that done, it's time to source our 24 gauge wire. In my case, I don't actually have spools of wire in different colors laying around, so instead I'm using an old ethernet cable that I had. This actually works great as you get 8 wires that are different colors, which helps guarantee you don't accidentally cross wires during the process of extending them. There's nothing wrong with using a spool of all the same colored wire, it's just very easy to confuse yourself with which wire was soldered where. The easiest way to split an ethernet cable like this one here is to simply run your X-Acto knife down the length of the shielding, gently, so that it scores the plastic. Once it's scored, just tear the end or cut it slightly so you can start peeling the shielding off. Thanks to the scoring mark with the X-Acto knife, it should easily split apart and let you remove the wire without much of an issue. You can use whatever colors you want for yours, but I'm using the white and orange, and the blue and white, and then, of course, the green wire, since there's a green wire in the bed leveler wiring harness already. The annoying part about that though is that you have to unwind the green and white wire, which is a bit tedious. It'll also end up a bit longer than the other wire colors, because it'll not be wound up, so you'll have to cut a little off later. With your wire now available, if using ethernet cable like I am, go ahead and untwist about 2 inches of wire. After that's done, you'll need to strip about half an inch of shielding off of the wire. With wire this thin, it's not the easiest thing to do sadly. Your standard wire strippers won't work as they don't have a hole small enough for this gauge of wire. So what I do instead is grab a brand new blade on a exacto knife, a box cutter, razor blade, whatever, and place the wire gently over the top of it with my thumb over the wire. I shouldn't need to emphasize this, but I'm going to. Be extremely careful doing this. Brand new razor blades are insanely sharp and will effortlessly cut you. So if you use my method, do not apply a lot of pressure and never, I repeat, never slide your thumb on the blade. Your goal is to twist the wire so that it rolls over the blade, scoring the plastic shielding of the wire. You don't have to actually cut all the way through to make this work. If you score about halfway into the shielding and then fold the wire, it'll break the shielding apart at the score line. Once that's done, you can easily just slide the cut piece off. You'll need to do this for all of the wires, both ends of the ethernet or 26 gauge wiring, as well as both ends of the bed leveler wires. Now one of the most important steps, putting the heat shrink on before soldering the wires together. I cannot express to you how many times and how frustrating it is to have a beautiful solder joint that you just did, only to look over and see your heat shrink sitting on the workbench, not on the two wires you just connected. 
This is super tedious with small heat shrink and small wires like you were working with here, but it is necessary. No one should ever use electrical tape to cover a splice if they don't have to. Small dexterity note here. One thing you see me do a lot when sliding the heat shrink on is actually use my middle fingers to apply pressure to the other hand. And this actually helps stabilize your hands a bit to make it easier to thread these small wires through the equally small heat shrink hole. Time for one of the two almost six minute recording sessions. It's time to solder the wires together. Total time to do this whole project, even with recording, was around 20 minutes, so it's not too bad. The large metal clampy thing here is what's called helping hands. Essentially, it's two alligator clips on a swiveling base with adjustable arms to hold wires in place while you connect them together. If I have the excess wire for it, I like to go with the 50% overlap method for soldering. You put the two pieces of wire together at the 50% mark, then twist them around each other. This method takes a little bit more wire to be able to hold in place compared to just twisting two wires together, though that tends to come apart in my experience, but it tends to give a better hold, in my opinion, while you're soldering. The other key point, since we're working with such small wires and we already have our heat shrink in place, the helping hands make for a heat break to stop the heat from the soldering iron from traveling too far down the wire and causing the heat shrink to, uh, well, shrink from the heat. Fancy the way that works. Before soldering, you want to add a bit of flux to the solder joint. This helps the solder adhere to the wires. Make sure your soldering iron tip is tinned with a light amount of solder on it. You don't want a glob or for it to be dripping off the iron. Touch the tip of the iron to the exposed wires to heat them up and then drag the solder itself over the wires. With wire this thin, they should heat up almost instantly and be able to melt the solder. The goal is to melt the solder into the wire, not use the iron itself to apply solder to the wire. That was called a cold joint and tends to break. As I said, not really an issue here since the wire is so small it pretty much instantly heats up. It becomes a bigger issue once you get down to around like 12 gauge wire. Anyway, rinse and repeat until all five wires on one side are completed. I should also mention I'm definitely not left-handed, but for how I had the camera set up, I didn't have much of a choice here. I'm actually a little impressed at how well I did given this situation. You'll want to take note of the wire colors you're using here as they will have to match up on the other side once you go to connect them. Next up is shrinking the first part of the heat shrink. Slide it over the solder joint and center the heat shrink over the joint. I like to use the helping hands to hold one end of the wires up so I can work all the way around the wires without an issue. To shrink the wire down, you can either use a hot air gun, which is the proper way, or a lighter or torch. Just uh, be careful not to light things on fire if you go that route. With that done, there's an optional step you can do. 
you can take two pieces of larger heat shrink to place over the entire wire loom that we're making. I went with about two six inch pieces so it covers the entire area that we spliced together. You go with two of them as you have one that slides all the way down to the splice we just did and then we have the second one ready to go and on the wire loom ready for the other side that we're about to solder together. You do not want to heat shrink this down yet just in case you forget the wire colors that you spliced together. Round two of soldering everything together, woo! This is sped up four times, so we're not sitting here forever just watching me solder. Anyway, just connect the same colors together as you did on the other side. In my case, orange to yellow, orange white to white, blue to black, blue white to red, and green to green. As I said earlier, what colors you use don't actually matter, so long as they go to the same cables at the end of it. Once everything is soldered together, go ahead and finish up by heat shrinking your connections. If you opted to add the additional heat shrink, center that over the splice that we did and shrink it all down. And with the heat shrink done, you should have a fully spliced together and extended cable for the automatic bed leveler. I'd offer this one to someone on the channel, but uh, it's not actually long enough. I just cut a random length of ethernet cable for the purposes of this video. Your total length needs to be about two meters or six feet. It's better for it to be a bit too long over too short any day of the week. With that said, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, if you like the content I'm putting out, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all new content as it comes out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.